Hey everybody, I decided to do a video. This is Matt Fremat of the Fremat Podcast. Uh, this isn't exactly libertarian news. I do plan on finding some more articles, possibly this weekend, to discuss. Uh, my usual co-host, General Patrick Flynn, uh, still in communications with him, still handling everything in his life. Bless him anyway. The Thunder from Honduras, or the Honduran Thunder, as I want to call them. Anyway, folks, please laugh. I wanted to get together and with you, I wanted to discuss something. The news always looks for dirty laundry, and one of the people that I know that in the sporting news, and that's, well, a sad, sad state of journalism these days, most sporting news, for the longest time they made they were able to write up and they found a darling and a man by the name of Lance Armstrong multi uh, multi well he was a mul tremendous amount of times that he's won the Tour de France and other races uh, on the news uh, made I mean he's always in the news he was winning you know winning but he did all sorts of great things, and uh, obviously the Live Strong thing, the cancer survivor, and I know a lot of uh, people waited a couple of years, and they're like, yeah, uh, one of his teammates snitched on him and said, hey, he was doing drugs, uh, performance-enhancing uh, chemicals, drugs, things like that, blood doping, possibly, Um you know, the people, uh, the, the media turned against him the whole nine yards. Uh, I mean, hell, you can watch the news. He became, he went from being a darling to a dickhead real quick. Now, my reason for talking about that today is I want to defend the undefendable. I know a lot of people hate when I say this. The undefendable people in life. I'll just stick with athletes, but one of my favorites here is Lance Armstrong. And you would ask me, why do I defend this guy? Because, as my notes had said, it said the top 5% will be the top 5%. And to stay in the top 5%, it takes practice, it takes busting your hump, and sometimes... When it comes to f the physical nature of these sports, it it that kind of stuff does help. I've talked about steroids being a benefit to anyone who's had injuries or inflammation or the inability to heal. And it's not what we remember of steroids, the you know, big pop of pump or anybody else you would think of that that was from the steroid era i'm not even accusing people of doing steroids but i'm going to tell you after i've had injuries and i went to a doctor for illnesses and they give me lighter amounts of of steroids and sometimes my injuries i've had to have bigger the stronger stuff that made my head throb in the whole nine yards and the reason why I talk about top athletes, this top 5%, they're going to be the top 5%. And the people on the margins that are near the top 5%, it might help them eke over. And I know you're a, a lot of the common arguments, common arguments are obviously things like it's cheating, they didn't try hard enough, it's denying somebody else a try. Some of these are just emotional ploys. And the one thing about being, you know, unconstitutional a-hole is the fact that you're like, okay, who cares? The top 5% of the top 5%. Say I hit a good lick right now. I get off my hump and I lose enough weight. Yeah, it's more look like a washed up football player than a guy who's a cyclist. But just say I get inspired all of a sudden. And I'm like the top in my region, and I'm hitting these wonderful, these wonderful events. 
I'm, mean, you know, uh, got like $20,000 worth of equipment in my house and I'm busting my hump and I'm like, yeah, everybody knows me from the newspaper. You know, it's like free Matt, the wild cyclist, the horseshoe cyclist. And, you know, I'm, I'm I have some like catch to me. I'm cool in interviews. Everybody loves me. And I go to whatever the, the nationals is. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like in the top 20%, but I'm just an alternate to one of these big races or I don't even make it. I don't, hell, I don't know how they do it. You know why? Because I'm not a cyclist. I'm not a cyclist enthusiast. But the thing is, I know talent. Talent is talent. Athleticism is athleticism. There's a point where cheating only does so much. Cheating pushes you only so much. You honestly have to be talented. You have to be good to do this. And I don't know why in why we're throwing rocks at the guy. He was good. Uh, Floyd, what's his face? Hell, I don't have it in my notes. His teammate, his team, teammate was good, and he's probably at the time was in a top five percent. And you know what? For every time somebody says, oh, it was because they were doping. Oh, no, maybe they were that good. There there might be a one or two of those other teams, just say out of 10, and those bottom two were upset because they were like, yeah, we're, you know, like, yeah, we're, we're working hard and we're in the top. We're, we're number one. And no, you're really the top 20%. Sorry, that's how life is. I've been to sporting events. No, I wasn't doped up or anything, but I ended up in the in the bottom. And you know what? I had a blast, and I was there supporting the outfit. And here's the thing: just don't BS yourself. Lance Armstrong, top five percent at the time. I know he's I know he's blacklisted. I know that he's chased off. He's in. I don't know if it was indignant because probably screwing that word up but the media wants you to grovel they want to make an example out of you and i guarantee you the cycling association or whoever the associated pinheads of america are called these days the thing is that if he'd grovel they might have let him slip back in the door but he's unapologetic don't apologize for being good how about that guys if you're in the top five percent and you get caught eh, whatever you know what? It's on you, man. Don't just don't cry about crap like that. And here's the thing: as much as you should ignore most of the media anyway, most of it's crap. Most people don't try anymore. And yeah, even sports journalism has gone into wokeness and crybabies and what they can sell tennis shoes for. And you know what? I imagine cycling's just as bad. They'll. I've seen them make some stupid headway, but you know what? I said, I remember that dude, and I heard he was good, and you know what? He won. So shut up, man. Just defend the undefendable. With Without it, he was pretty pretty daggum good. And you know what? They said it pushed him to the, the front of the line. He still had to show up, man. He still had to bust his hump. And you know what? There's probably somebody, some bald guy with a horseshoe mustache who's 200-something pounds in the back saying, you know, it's no fair, he cheated. You know, as he gets chased by the news van in the back. And you know what? The news van people aren't going to tell you this, but I will. The top 5% is the top 5%. All right. Now... Here, you know, obviously this is the end of the video, but I want you to hit, uh, what is it? Like, subscribe, thumbs up, whatever. Uh, Twitter at the bottom. Got the rest of it there. Try to put it on uh, some of the other outfits. Gab, what's left of parlor. Yeah, I'm on there. Who cares? And you know what? I got hate mail. Hey, if you don't like what I say, send me an email and say... My name is, you know, Pete the uh, Invertebrate, and I'm a complete, you know, ass jack, and I think you're full of crap. So send me an email if you think I'm full of crap. 
And you know what? I'll even read the stupid thing out, out loud, man. Go for it. Obviously, I want you to leave a comment, but it's even better if you have a real, a real email and, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to track you down, man. I'll probably, I'll just say, good job, man. I don't care, man. Just, if you got a set, you got a set, man. I don't care if they're mammaries or testicles, man. Go for it. Have a good one. All right. Take care.